Good afternoon, good evening in fact, a little bit later today. Uh, welcome to my daily broadcast, this is episode number 737 and today we're going to talk about lack of understanding. Um, the title officially is, we never understand each other, here's why. And I'll explain what I mean and explain how we can actually maybe understand each other better than, better than we have. Before I jump into all, all that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks, because I do this every day. My name is Barry Selby, I guess you could figure that out already. I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which informs my work, it drives my passion, and it also is what caused these talks to happen, or start happening over two years ago, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. That's what MFTM truncates to. And today we're episode number 737, there's a lot of them out there, and this is Facebook Live that I do every day, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time, but to do hours later today, because it's being interviewed early, which I may reference in this talk. But the topic I want to focus on today, because it came out of the talk I had, the interview I had earlier, is about how we don't understand each other. So, let's talk about this. And I'm speaking about men and women not understanding each other, because that's the predominant conversation I'm having in my relationship talks and, and these conversations too. Hi Tiffany, nice to see you in my broadcast. Um, let me start with a couple of broad spectrum things. First of all, um, actually this is from, uh, actually I, 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 I've heard this before, but I got it from Mark Gunga, who has, is a preacher minister from back east who did a Facebook, sorry, did a YouTube series, actually did an event that was put on YouTube called The Tale of Two Brains. And he talks about something that really landed for me and it really makes sense. And the basic thing is that br speaking about our brains, men's and women's brains, Men's brains are basically a whole container full of little boxes. Every single one of them is isolated, not touching each other, and gets self-contained. And in those boxes are all our different things, activities, focuses, issues, concerns, plans, visions, all these different things are in the little boxes. And none of them touch each other. They're all isolated and separate. Women's brains and these are obviously these are metaphors these are not actual literally what brains are made up of but how we think and how we function women's brains are actually one long continuous thread everything is connected from a to b from a, one to a thousand all these different things are connected and interlaced which means if one thing happens it affects everything else i didn't get ahead of myself now which means that when we are talking and when we're communicating we're very different for women they can be thinking about one thing and talking about that, but it's ties to this thing over here, this thing over here, this over here, so she'll actually be talking about all of these things at once. For us men, that's very confusing because in our way of thinking things, there's only one thing at a time. Now, as a masculine person, we, me, have a way of expressing that is very linear. We're very good at doing one thing at a time. Give us a goal, an orientation to get somewhere, we'll take care of it, we'll get there, no problem at all, and we're strong at that. It's one of our strong suits. Which means we're very low of focus. That's one of our gifts. However, women aren't. <laughs> to be put it simply, not usually. The masculine is focused laser, as in towards a point. The feminine is actually focused more expans expansively, which is more away from the point. So it's opposite polarities, different areas of energy. So which means communication can be very challenging when we want to talk about one simple thing at a time, complete that, move with the next one, complete that, move with the next one. That's the way we think. Whereas women are always going this, 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 and this at once. And we're like, whoa, hang on a second. I can't keep track of all that. Oh, no, no. I was going to say something. No, <laughs> oh, no, I won't do that. That would, that would be a, that would be a, I was going to make a joke, but it wasn't going to land very well, so I'll let one alone. But bottom line is very simple, is that communication is a challenge when you don't understand how the other person talks. It's kind of like translating from French to English. It's not easy to translate because they're different languages. This is the same language, but different, different, processing units behind it, which means we communicate very, very differently. So that's one piece, which is that level of difference. The second one, which I'm going to borrow from Gary Chapman's Five Love Languages, which I've talked about before, and I recommend that book. If you haven't got his book, by the way, I highly recommend it. Five Love Languages is a great book. I recommend it in my book. He has distilled, after 30 plus years of being a therapist, these five main ways, predominantly, that we express love and expect to receive love. If you haven't, If you haven't read the books and I don't know what the five love languages are in simple terms and I'll give them the, the titles um, there's there's um, words of affirmation acts of service gifts physical touch and um, what's the word time something time um, 
quality time. That was it, quality time. That's the five. And what that means, basically, with having love languages is that we each have individually our predominant primary focused love language, and maybe a secondary. Usually it's only it's one primary, one secondary, not usually two or three at once. So it's an unusual to have all five love languages active at the same time, which means with your partner, who also has a predominant love language and maybe a secondary, you may or may not actually line up. So when you're expressing love to your partner, the way you think love will be expressed or where you feel it naturally would be inside of you, they may not have a clue you're loving them and vice versa. Does it ring a bell for anybody out there? I think you might explain the experience this. So for example, if you are someone who is feeling that the words of affirmation is your love language, meaning that you have to express and say love and, expect, and also hear it from your partner, let it, you have to, let it tell you they love you for, them to, for you to feel that love. Doesn't matter what they do, if they don't tell you they love you, you won't feel it. And you have to tell them you love them for you to know that you're sharing love with them. They won't, as, you, as far as you're concerned, nothing else matters as far as love is concerned unless you say it to them. That's all well and good. But if your partner, for example, is one who is all about quality time, which means they want to have time with you that's away from everything else, we can be together, you can hang out, you can be friend, connected, be intimate, be loving, that means love to them. So it means if you basically you have to go to work and you rush out the door and you go, honey, I love you, and leave the house and go off and do your thing, that doesn't resonate at all for them. They want quality time. So it doesn't matter how many times you tell them you love them, unless you're doing it when you're alone together with some quality time, it doesn't make any difference. So if you are someone who's always rushing around doing everything you can and you're texting them I love you and you're telling them I love you when you drive by, and you think that's enough? If their focus, if their primary love language is quality time, it isn't. On the flip side, of course, that works the other way too. If they don't tell you they love you, that for them is okay because they know they want to spend quality time with you. But unless you hear from them they love you, you don't feel it. it. Doesn't matter if you spend an hour, a day, a week with them in quality time, being private, being separate, being together and enjoying the quality time together, doing things together. That may feel great, but you don't necessarily know that they love you until they tell you, which they won't do if they don't know your love language is words of affirmation. So put that together with different mindsets, different ways of functioning. And you wonder why we can't understand each other? <laughs> There's also a lot more in there too. So let me throw another piece on just to make it even more confusing. Another piece just to give you some thought as well. We all have our own history. This is the big one, by the way. This is the one that I, is the deep depth of my work and the, tr and the, the core of the work I do with my clients. So this one is, is bigger than the other two, important too. But this one is about our history. As human beings, we all individually have our own unique history we grew up through and from. Meaning that our ways of learning how to love were imprinted by the way we saw our parents express or not express love when we were very young. And some of you are already ahead of me and you know where I'm going with this. So when you are in relationship with somebody who also has their own history, upbringing and love experience from their own parents, you might be wondering how on earth you two can actually connect with each other. Because the, the way you express love maybe come from a traumatic background. Maybe you had a thing in your, relation, your parents' relationship where they were always arguing or they, they would depart and leave. They wouldn't stay together. So the love you experienced from them was tied with either abandonment or with l loud voices, perhaps. And your partner's experience of love was maybe um, very flatlined. There was no any expression of love. It just was just, there was safety there and there was comfort there. That was all. There was no loud voices. There was no outpourings of love and there was no, nothing traumatic. So your way of knowing that love actually works for you is we have to have raised voices. It's in programming. Or maybe you've got to spend time apart if you know you've got loving there because of your upbringing. The same thing is true for your partner's perspective, except theirs is from the place of having it being quiet, peaceful, and comfortable. And then you can see where I'm going with this. Your ability to love because of what you were raised with and their ability to love from what they're raised with don't fit. So this is another layer, which is actually one of the biggest layers that's not spoken about much. So add that to the five love languages and the wiring of our brains, and you can see how it's almost impossible for us to understand each other. But the good news is that all of this is fixable. First of all, let me start with the most incongruous one, the, big, the, big, the first one, which is the, fi the um, I'm put this in order, first one. So understanding the fact that we're wired differently opens up the door to actually changing our communication style so we can listen to each other. So knowing if you're a man, that your woman has everything connected, 
means that you go, oh, hang on a second, honey, can you, can you give me this one piece at a time because I can't process it when you do it all at once, which is great for her to say, oh, I can simplify that, and then you understand everything. Great. And on the other side of things, if you're the woman and he wants to speak to you in single teaching pieces or teach it single uh, process pieces, knowing that that's his style gives you a chance to relax and go, you know what, I don't need to worry about anything else. He's, this will work. I'm using this as a common denominator because the lowest common denominator is the single piece communication because he, he won't be able to catch up to your multitasking way of doing it easily and he won't be able to multitask for you to receive at the level you want to. So settle at that level. So that's one. Second one, the love languages. This one, I highly recommend if you haven't done this in your relationship, and if you're single, go to the Five Love, Five love Languages website and do the test. You get the book if you want, do the test. I, I, this is nothing to do with me. This is, this is Gary Chapman's work. But do the test and find out what your predominant love languages are. Your first and maybe your second. And if you're in a relationship, have your partner do the same thing. And then compare notes. If you do match, because it's possible you match, where both of you have words of affirmation, you've scored. Because then you can just say, I love you, and they get it, and they say, I love you, and you get it too. Easy. But if you don't have the same love languages, you can now know what your partner's love language is and you can practice theirs to help them feel loved. So they can learn to remember to say, I love you, if that's your primary love language and you get it. You know that for them to spend time with them, so you make time in your calendar to be with them, is all they need to know they're loved. Problem solved with practice. So that's two. The third one, that's the big one. So if you are someone who has realized that your history has got some imprinting happening in your current love life and you're single, we should talk because this is something that's deeper than just simply reading a book or doing a test or figuring out things on a simple level. If you are not willing to keep repeating the same old cycle from your parents imprinting on your consciousness, because that's what happened, you want to get some help to rewire that programming. And that's the work I do with my clients, part of the work I do with my clients. If you don't already have someone to work with, I highly recommend you reaching out to me. We can talk about this. I will put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me so we can talk. It's something that I'm very passionate about because so many of us have got that programming inside that we haven't figured out how to get out of yet. So there are books out there I can, you can definitely read. I can, I can tell you that. But I recommend you actually work with somebody who knows what they're doing. And if there's somebody else out there you have that works, great. If not, if, some, if there's somebody out there that does the work, yes, that's great. I think that's what I said. <laughs> if not, reach out to me. We talk, message, me up, message me over social media and I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me so we can talk. Um, I think that's it. I wanted to drop that as a teaching. There's a lot more besides that, but I won't give you these three because that's big enough. That's enough piece of the process about why it's hard for us to understand each other. I know this is not easy. I know it requires some effort, but I also know it's worth it. So with that, I thank you for watching. I appreciate being with me. Oh, replays and everything else. As I said, this is my Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, a little bit later because I had an interview earlier, which is some of this came from that conversation. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, you can find the replays on my business page. So I'll give you the way you can find me live and then business page and then YouTube. My personal page is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. You can join me at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week, almost always. Today was a bit later because of what I already booked. The replays go onto my business page, which is barryselby.author, and also onto my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to the channel. Oh, and please like my, my business page. My YouTube channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe. And on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. If you have problems, challenges with this, let me know. If you want to put, if you have any thoughts, comments, questions, you can put them in the comments below. If you want to share it with anybody else, please do so. But if you want to get help, reach out. Don't bottle it up. Don't stuff it. Get support. Get love. Get guidance. And change your life. With that, I thank you for watching. As always, I'll see you again tomorrow. Let's say same time, 5 p.m. Pacific time, same channel, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.